my name is Juliet Foster. I am a lecturer in social psychology in the Department of Psychology. My main focus for a long time has been understandings of mental health problems. Uh, and as part of that, I've looked at understandings held by people who use mental health services, mental health professionals, and also the general public. So the book I'm going to talk about is called The Madness of a Seduced Woman by Susan Fromberg Schaefer. It's a book that really spans about 150 years of, of history, but the main uh, narrative is centred on Agnes uh, and especially her early life uh, in Vermont uh, at the turn of the century, at the end, end of the, the 19th century. So I think the themes that it picks up on which are of particular interest to me, um, that there's, there's, a, there's a large number of them. In particular, well one actually is the diagnosis of mental health problems. Um, in the book, Agnes's doctor, he comes up with this diagnosis, he says that, that she's experiencing the madness of a seduced woman. I'm very interested in the way that diagnoses have changed and developed. What else comes into a diagnosis beyond the sort of the purely medical, the purely biological, and whether we ever can see diagnosis as being, you know, purely purely within those terms. Um, so a lot of that resonated, I think, with 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 what was happening in the case of of, um, of Agnes and whether this was was a diagnosis which had any any resonance or not. Um, in the book. Um, largely people are persuaded that actually this is fundamentally this is something that that is a valid diagnosis that Agnes is this fundamentally wronged character. Um, the way that the asylum Highbury Asylum is portrayed within the book is particularly interesting because it, it sort of recurs at different points in the first half of the book but is this fairly sort of distant place um, and that resonated for me because of course I grew up you know, in, in the age when large psychiatric hospitals were, um, there was a lot of debate surrounding their closure, but they were still very much part of the local landscape. So at that particular point, I was very interested in the idea of going into clinical psychology um, in the longer term. Uh, but I had an idea for a PhD project, um, which was to look at the way people who are diagnosed with mental health problems understand mental health and illness. And literature struck me as being interesting because, of course, that was an area where there was often a voice given to people who, who had a diagnosis of, of some kind. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a complicated area because you've got to think about the different reasons why the author might be, might be using that particular character uh, and what the author's actually drawing on in order to, to, to voice that character. Um, but I was interested that, as I say, in art and literature, you had this, these, these themes coming through much more strongly than I think you did in academia at that point. So that definitely had an influence on me moving, I think, into, into that particular area and considering that in more depth. I've developed my interests in, in different themes that, that come out of the book in, in different ways. And in some ways, I think I'm still returning to those now. So some of the work I've been doing more recently looking at um, uh, the relationship between social psychology and architectural history, especially looking at the asylums and psychiatric hospitals. In some ways, I think it comes right the way back to themes I was interested in at that particular point. Um, so it's been important for a number of reasons, as I say, purely just for enjoyment, but also because I think it's just picked up on, on so many of these themes that, that I have developed you know, over the last 20 years.